Our history is mazed with a vast number of mysteries who still remain unanswered to this day. The true identity of Jack the Ripper, the fate of the Ark of the Covenant, JFK's true killer and many more. But none of these has a more mysterious appeal than a puzzling book from a bygone era no one has ever been able to read, right? Unbeknownst to the world for centuries, a mysterious medieval codex lay hidden, waiting to reveal its secrets to those inquisitive enough to unravel its cryptic pages. Ladies and gents, this is the story of the Voynich Manuscript, named after the one man who rediscovered it in the 20th century, lest it would have been nameless forever. The Voynich Manuscript is a medieval document that has baffled researchers, historians and cryptographers for centuries. The book is of unknown origin and purpose, written by an unknown author in an obscure script, adding to its allure and mystique. The Codex has had an ambiguous history and disputed ownership since its appearance at the end of the 15th century or during the 16th century, although some theories suggest alternative timeframes and potential regions of origin, such as Central Europe, Italy or Germany. As for its historical background, a letter by the scientist Johannes Marcus Marcy, associated with the Voynich manuscript, offers a clue in the attempt to reconstruct the history of its ownership. Marcy notes that the manuscript belonged to Emperor Rudolf II of Habsburg, who purchased it for 600 gold ducats and believed that it was the work of Roger Bacon, a medieval English philosopher. It is very likely that Emperor Rudolf acquired the manuscript from the English astrologer John Dee. Dee apparently owned the manuscript along with a number of other Roger Bacon manuscripts. To further add, his son noted that Dee, while in Bohemia, owned, I quote, a book containing nothing but hieroglyphics, which book his father bestowed much time upon, but I could not hear that he could make it out, end quote. Emperor Rudolf himself seems to have given the manuscript to Jacobus Horsiki de Tepenes, his personal doctor, an exchange based on the inscription visible only with ultraviolet light, on the first folio on the right, which reads his name. Johannes Marcus Marcy of Kronland also presented the book to Athanasius Kircher, a German Jesuit scholar and polymath, in 1666. The Codex would make his elusive way till 1912, when Polish-American antiquarian bookseller Wilfred M. Voynich purchased the manuscript from the Jesuit College at Frascati near Rome. In 1969, the Codex was given to the Beinecke Library by H. P. Kraus, who had purchased it from the estate of Ethel Voynich, Wilfred Voynich's widow. The original Voynich manuscript is currently housed at the Beinecke Rare Book and Manuscript Library at Yale University, where it is carefully preserved and protected. In recent years, digital copies of the manuscript have been made available online, allowing scholars and enthusiasts to study it more closely. And now, let's delve deeper into the manuscript's enigmatic internity, the physical characteristics of the Voynich manuscript surely contribute further to its intrigue. It measures 23.5 high by 16.2 cm wide, bound in vellum and consists of approximately 240 vellum pages. Carbon dating has placed its creation between the early 15th century, specifically around 1404 and 1438. The vellum used in its construction is believed to have been sourced from calf or goatskin, indicating the manuscript's high quality and value. The script known as the Voynich script is composed of elaborate and unique characters, resembling a flowing cursive handwriting style. The writing is in a brownish-black ink of variable darkness and appears to have been executed with a quill pen. When examined with ultraviolet radiation, it displayed a deep velvety purple-black, which suggested the use of an iron gall ink. Described as a magical or scientific text, nearly every page contains botanical, figurative and scientific drawings of a pastoral but quite lively character, drawn in ink with vibrant washes in various shades of green, brown, yellow, blue and red. As I mentioned, the language it represents has yet to be deciphered and appears to be unlike any known language. 
Accompanying the text are numerous illustrations depicting plants, astronomical diagrams, astrological symbols and other mysterious drawings. These illustrations fall into six different divisions, starting with the botanicals, which contain drawings of 113 unidentified plant species. Astronomical and astrological drawings, including astral charts with radiating circles, suns and moons. Zodiac symbols such as Pisces, Taurus and Sagittarius. Nude females emerging from pipes or chimneys and courtly figures. A biological section containing a myriad of drawings of miniature female nudes, most with swelled abdomens immersed or wading in fluids and strangely interacting with interconnecting tubes and capsules. An elaborate array of nine cosmological medallions, many of them drawn across several folded folios and depicting possible geographical forms. Pharmaceutical drawings of over 100 different species of medicinal herbs and roots portrayed with jars or vessels in red, blue or green. And lastly, continuous pages of text, possibly recipes, with star-like flowers marking each entry in the margins. Numerous attempts have been made to decipher the Voynich manuscript, employing statistical analysis, linguistic comparisons, code-breaking techniques and computer-assisted algorithms. However, no breakthrough has been achieved, and the manuscript's meaning and purpose remain elusive. The unique characteristics of the text, such as patterns of repetition and variation, have presented significant challenges to decipherment efforts. These patterns have led researchers to believe that the script represents a structured and meaningful language, rather than just a random arrangement of symbols. Over the years, various theories have emerged regarding the manuscript's purpose and content. Some propose that it may contain encrypted information, an invented language representing an esoteric code that requires specialized knowledge to decipher. However, without a reliable decipherment, these theories remain speculative. The enigma of the Voynich manuscript has captivated some of the most brilliant minds of the 20th century like William F. Friedman, a U.S. Army cryptographer, and his wife Elizabeth Smith. Friedman and Smith founded the Voynich Manuscript Study Group in 1944, and their research was the first to utilize computers as a means of textual analysis. They theorized that the manuscript was produced in southern Germany or northern Italy, and originated in the early 16th century, which carbon dating has now proven to be a century too late. Friedman's final thoughts on the text were that it was an early attempt to construct an artificial or universal language of the a priori type. In other words, Friedman believed that the cipher was not, in fact, a cipher at all, but simply an attempt at linguistic experimentation. Another more contemporary theory is the article by Nicholas Gibbs, an American historical researcher and television writer, which suggests that the manuscript is a woman's health manual and the written characters of this language represent Latin abbreviations. This speculation was soon to be disputed, on the account that the supposed Latin used in the book doesn't result in real Latin characters that actually make sense. Despite the lack of a definitive solution, the Voynich manuscript's authenticity is widely accepted. Extensive scientific analysis of the materials, including the vellum and the pigments used, suggest that the manuscript is indeed a genuine medieval artifact. Furthermore, its historical provenance and documentation trace its ownership back to the 16th century, reinforcing its credibility as a genuine historical document. In conclusion, the Voynich manuscript's enduring mystery has captivated the imagination of many, leading to numerous scholarly investigations and popular fascination. It has inspired works of fiction, academic studies and dedicated communities of individuals who continue to explore its secrets. Despite extensive research efforts and advancements in technology, the Voynich manuscript remains an unsolved puzzle, defying decipherment no matter the existence of numerous theories from different periods. Five centuries later, the Voynich manuscript still stands as a testament to the limits of our current knowledge and the allure of enigmatic historical artifacts, while also being one of history's most lasting enigmas. Thank you for watching.